In the last video I unboxed a package deal from AliExpress which included a Xeon NAS motherboard, the Xeon processor as well as 32 gigs of RAM. Um, just to see if it would actually boot and run given the relatively cheap price. In the interim I built a case for the board out of some sheet steel. It includes eight hard drive bays that are easy to slide out and don't require any tools. And I've been running it continuously just to make sure that the board doesn't suffer a burn-in failure before I invest in the spinning drives. If you'd like to see the plans for the case or the 3D models for the hard drive enclosure, um, let me know in the comments, I would be happy to share them. A number of people asked about the power consumption of this build, and there were some comments that, you know, approximately 100 watts idling seems a bit high for just a NAS. And that's true, if all you're doing is serving some media, then this is probably not the build for you. Again, my intention for this was um, quite a lot of um, high, high bandwidth um, file sharing as well as running a number of other virtual machines. So um, in this video, I'm going to cover some of the questions asked around temperatures and power consumption. And um, we'll do that before and after we install the spinning drives. So I don't have a good power meter, but I've got a great um, and fairly accurate um, clamp meter that will measure the AC current. And at the moment, it's sitting at about 31 milliamps. And so that's the idle power or the kind of sleep power that the, the machine is drawing. And that obviously keeps the power supply, you know, in a, in a sleep state and it keeps the motherboard in a, in a kind of semi-asleep state that when you hit the button the BIOS turns it back on etc. So there is some power draw even though the machine is off um, but let's now boot it up and see what happens. Okay so I've hit the on button and you can see the power consumption immediately jumps to about 580 milliwatts sorry milliamps and it'll take a while for it to go through its self-check and you'll hear the beeps as soon as it's done there we have the boots done and it is now booting Proxmox and so that happens at about 600 to 700 milliamps and in this configuration I have no spinning drives actually there's nothing that's attached to the SATA ports that is even uh, powered up and so there we have Proxmox booted and it's idling at about 320 milliamps. Now let's see if we can stress the system out. It's still idling at about 320 uh, milliamps. Um, so let's stress it and check the temperatures as we go. And you can immediately see that as it starts running, the, the, the current draw jumps to about 1 amp. And so that's about 220 watts. And we can see here the temperatures range kind of mid 60s to 70s. And the fan is sitting at about 2000 RPM. And there's just over 2000 RPM. And then the stress run is complete. And almost immediately the fan drops and the temperatures start to drop down below 50. And there they're back below 50. And the fan is, fan is back to kind of its normal condition. So it's a very quick response as the stress is taken off the um, 28 threads. Our next step is to fit the spinning drives. So I just ordered these off Amazon. Here's some power spare power cables. And I've organized the six terabyte red plus drives. I've used these before. I absolutely love them. Um, I don't need as much capacity as the 10 gigs would, 10 terabyte drives would give me right now. And these things always get cheaper over time. And I've got plenty of space in this machine. And so I decided to go for the six terabytes instead of the tens. And, you know, if in future I need to upgrade, I then can. These have come quite well packed. I have an open box here somewhere. These have come quite well packed. 
in you know, a fairly substantial bit of packaging to shield them against any sort of shock. Our next step is to fit these drives into the 3D printed drawers. Um, this is a two-less setup, so it should be pretty straightforward. Simple as that. Okay, now that the drives are in the brackets, we can fit them to the chassis. I've also made up some brackets for two and a half inch SSD drives. Um, I've got a couple of these lying around and I, depending on how they perform, I may use them as cash for TrueNAS. Installing the drives is pretty easy. They just slide in and they click into place with a very nice detent. There we have it. All the drives are installed. Okay, now that I've got the hard drives plugged in and wired up, um, you can see the idling power is still around 30 milliamps. Um, we can now boot it and see what happens. And immediately we see that the, the power jumps up to 900 milliamps at startup, not just the kind of 600 we had earlier. And there we go, we heard the beeps. There's the BIOS. And there's Proxmox. Okay, and there Proxmox is booted and we're sitting at about 400, 430 milliamps of power draw and um, times 220, that's about 80 to 100 watts. One of the reasons I bought this motherboard was because it comes with two SATA controllers and obviously the 10 SATA ports. But, and I'm gonna use this, this allows us to pass the entire controller through to TrueNAS um, in Proxmox. And so that allows us to bypass the, all of the handling and interfacing that Proxmox would otherwise do. But one of the things I wanna do is enable hot swapping on these drives. And you'll see, unfortunately, there are only three drives installed one of the Western Digital Red drives failed straight out of the box, and so I've got to send that back to Amazon. But now we've enabled um, hot swap uh, plug and play on the on the server SATA controller, which is going to have the four drives that I've used. Um, the other controller has the two old SSDs on it, and it's got another old three gig uh, Western Digital drive. Um, for which I'm also going to enable hot plugging. So that's done and we will now go into Proxmox and actually pass these through. If we now go into Proxmox and open up a shell, we can look for our controller devices. Um, and so those are the three controller devices. It's at 11, 1F, and the NVMe we're not going to touch, that sits at one. But the one I'm most interested in now is the, actually I'm going to move both. So the serial SATA, the, the server SATA and the six port SATA controller, um, we're going to allow straight pass through to, to TrueNAS. So to do that, we go to the data center view, we go to resource mappings, which are down here. And we add a resource mapping, we give it a name. 
Um, I'm going to call this S SATA for port and that was located at location 11 and we're going to pass through everything on that controller as one device and we create that and then we're going to do the six port controller the six port controller also has RAID um, for TrueNAS you should turn off the RAID um, it works better if TrueNAS has direct control and there we go it's got these three devices it's a low pin count um, device as well as the six port controller as well as an SM bus and we'll just pass that whole thing through that allows TrueNAS to monitor the drives to get the smart status updates etc so it can truly monitor the drive health etc and so there we've created we've created our two mappings. Now the reason we do mappings is it allows Proxmox to correctly identify the resource and then make sure that that resource is allocated to the right virtual machine because as the, the machine boots it, it gets enumerated in a slightly random way and so this makes sure that the virtual machine gets the right PCI pass-through. Then to enable the pass-through we go to our virtual machine we go to hardware, we say add, and we would say PCI device. And here we can select the pass through device that we've now created. So we're going to pass through the four port device. and we create another PCI device mapping and we're going to pass through the six port device and there we have it and so now we don't need to pass through any of the physical hard disks um, these disks here are basically the, the Proxmox um, virtual machine disks. These two controllers will actually have the spinning disks um, associated with them. And so if we now start TrueNAS, okay, TrueNAS is now running. And if we go into shell, And we look for our SATA devices, you'll see we now have the two SATA devices that have been passed through natively into Proxmox. And if we now go and look at the storage, we will see that there are five unassigned disks and we can create our storage pools. The advantage of doing it this way allows TrueNAS to see these devices natively and so it can monitor them from a smart perspective and drive temperature monitoring etc so it can do all of those things which it wouldn't be able to do if it was only seeing these through Proxmox. If you found this useful or informative consider giving this a thumbs up and consider subscribing but in conclusion um, with Proxmox installed TrueNAS running on top of that the four spinning disks passed through and spinning the idling power on this is somewhere between 400 and 420 milliamps and that equates to about 90 to 95 watts of power consumption on my system. That's in idle um, and for me that's actually a good, it, it's, it's a little bit expensive but it's, it's a good trade-off to allow me to get the sort of high bandwidth file serving that I need for what I'm doing. Thanks for watching.